Hey, 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 guys. It is me, Coach Tamika James, your favorite coach with another episode of Entrepreneur Speak. Today, I have an amazing entrepreneur with me. Her name is Arnetta Rogers of My BMF Solutions. So, Arnetta, I really like for my guests to actually introduce themselves to tell everyone whatever it is that you want people to know about you and your business. So if you're ready, let's go. Well, I am. I want to first say thank you, Tamika, for having me. I am completely honored to be in, on your platform and in front of your guests. Uh, but a little about myself, okay? I impact millionaire mindset beauty professionals who are stuck in their mess. Ooh. Yeah. And I also empower uh, and educate beauty professionals on how to manage a legitimate business, build generational wealth, and live healthy, happy lives. Mm. So that's what we do here at My BMF Solutions. <laughs> that sounds great. Yeah. So it sounds like there's a combination of things that you actually offer with your um, with your business. So let's start diving in exactly what it looks like when someone gets on the phone with you and they're they're having what issue with their business and what is it that you solve? Uh, well, I solve many issues actually, uh, but the structure and the model of my business is such that um, we have uh, business management software. Um, okay. Salon business management software, which is integrated with healthcare and life insurance for the beauty professional. And that came about because in our industry, most of us do not have our business in order. We don't have the proper insurances for our business, for our life and retirement, or for our health. And when I first started this, I really thought that it was something out there for us. I was secure in my own right because, you know, like many of us, I was married. So I had the privilege of having my husband's insurance and, you know, having uh, even his life insurance from his job as being his spouse. Uh, and I also had another uh, uh, life insurance as well. But being in a leadership role and being a manager, I owned my first salon, my own home, and was married by the age of 24, right? Uh, so being a leader, I had a lot of stylists come to me with these issues. And again, I'm a resolutions person. I like to solve problems. Right? I don't want to just be your counselor. I want to uh, bring resolve to your issues. And uh, so I started looking around to find out if I could partner with someone or if it was some something out there that could help us in this industry. And when I began to look, there was nothing out there. And so I thought, okay, well then let me look into trying to start something and you know, uh, you know, my mind just got to racing. Uh, and I found that I couldn't be behind the chair and take on this new endeavor. So I had to make the decision to come from behind the chair and completely focus and dedicate my time to creating what I knew we needed as a whole within the industry. And, um, you know, that's how uh, my BMF Solutions was born. Wow. Um, so I'd love to sit in that space for a little while. Mm -hmm. What was it like when you got to the moment where you said to yourself, the only way I'm really going to be able to, to actually get this done is to get from behind this chair. How long did it take for you to figure that out? About two years. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because I, okay. you know, at the time I had a salon in Charlotte and I had salon suites in Maryland and okay. prior to I had lost everything and moved to Charlotte. So it was a great risk for me to think of someone else other than myself. 
you know, because I had began to rebuild. And by then it was about 2012 when I had that idea. And it just kept banging me over the head. And I was like, oh, why, why? I don't want to. Um, but it kept coming to me. And two years later, I made the decision to come from behind the chair. And it was scary. It was really scary because it was nothing on that plate. It was a clean slate. So well, tell me what, do, what does it mean? I lost everything prior to that. Well, um, in 2007, during the um, housing crisis, during that time, I um, lost my mother's home. I had my own home prior to that. Uh, but when my mother passed uh, in 2001, I made the decision to sell my home <clears throat> and to keep my mother's legacy, if you will, going. And um, But we got caught up in the housing crisis and it was devastating. We uh, lost our home. Um, I lost a major investment of $64,000. Um, and that was a lot of money back then. And so um, I was devastated and I moved my family to another state. We chose Charlotte. I rebuilt, um, you know, went there, uh, went to a salon and, and made really good money and, uh, you know, opened up a salon. I sold that salon and opened up another one and then used some additional uh, money uh, to open up salon suites in Maryland. And for seven years, I did that. Every two weeks, I would go back and forth from Maryland to Charlotte until I couldn't do it anymore. It started to, you know, weigh heavy on me. Um, and then I started to think about my future and not wanting to be behind the chair forever. And so, yeah, I stepped out on faith. Um, I asked my husband if he would support me in that. And he said, sure. And he did. And um, it was a blessing. I'm so glad I did. Um, it was trying at times, but I'm so glad I did because now so many others are benefiting from this business model. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So thank you for sharing um, that deep dive into your story because I know you probably didn't even think it was so relevant to what we're talking about today, but someone is listening. And actually needs to hear that information about those transitions that you were going through to actually get you to where you are today. So thank mm -hmm. you again for sharing. Mm -hmm. So fast forward, yeah. we get to the point where you decide to, whoop, I'm letting it go. I am ready to get this business started. Now let's talk about, was it easy? Did it just start just like that with the snap of a finger? Or how long did it take before you could actually see something tangible, something that really was coming to life for you? How long did that take? Uh, it took about three years before I could start to get some traction. I came from behind the chair in 2014. It wasn't until 2017 so until I began to see that I'm really on the right track and I really need to keep going. Of course, um, while I'm doing the work and studying to get all of the necessary licenses that's needed to even be in this profession, right? Because I had to pivot into a whole nother career. So right. I had to master what I needed to learn in order to uh, be in a position uh, to even uh, share this to the public. So um, it, it wasn't easy, but it was definitely worth it. Okay. Now listen, this is entrepreneur speak. And I know that a lot of people want to hear all of the beauties of how the business started, but we just found out that it was about three years in the making. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me what was that like in the house? Because you have a husband, you have a family, Yes. Everyone needs to be taken care of. What was going on in the house at that moment during those three years? Like what was the, what was the temperature in the house? Uh, because my husband is, he's a very patient man. Um, there were times where he would, you know, 
make a comment and say, you know, there's some money coming up in here, right? Uh-huh. And, <laughs> and I would be, you know, like, hey, you know, but you you agreed to this, right? You said that you would be my support system and, and it's going to take a little time. Um, and he would see me working. And of course, I had certain clients that just wouldn't let me go. Um, in addition to that, remember, I shared with you that I went back and forth for seven years from Charlotte to uh, Maryland. Now, Charlotte was our home at that time, but it became that point where my husband said, we have to make a decision. We have to choose one state over the other because we had a condo in Maryland and we had an apartment in Charlotte. So we were paying two businesses and two, you know, homes, two places to live. And so um, even though I was making the money, it still wasn't, it it started not to make much sense uh, because we needed to downsize if I was going to eliminate that income. So that's what we did. We downsized. um, We didn't eat out. Um, you know, I didn't get my nails done as much, you know, it was sacrifices that were made. And I just kept saying to myself, you know, if he wanted me to stop, then he would not keep putting things in place. Every time I would take one step, God would take two and he would bring people in my midst that would reassured me in a sense that I was on the right path. And, you know, again, to answer your questions, yes, we had to make sacrifices. And at times he did appear to be um, a little uh, worried if this is going to work or not, right? But he knew I was a go-getter. He knows I'm a hard worker. He saw me studying and he saw the progress. And, um, He's a pretty frugal person anyway. He likes nice things, but he's a simple man. So I I was the one that had to cut back on the nails, cut back on shopping, cut back on eating out. And um, again, the sacrifice was worth it. All right. Thank you for sharing that as well, because Mm -hmm. some tend to just tell the positive, the upside of the story, but everyone needs to hear that, you know, maybe someone is listening and they need to hear Keep going, keep going. Yes. You might think, oh, it's supposed to take two months or three months. It just might take three years yes. before the fruits of your labor actually come to life. So let's move into, now that we've heard these things that have already gone wrong and not mm-hmm. wrong, but they've gone in a certain direction. Wrong yes. was totally the wrong word. I'm so sorry. I did not mean to say that. <laughs> um, however, we see the side of it where it wasn't so light. Like it was like, oh my gosh, but... Mm-hmm. Here we go. We get to the moment in time where things are really starting to pick up. Mm -hmm. How did you know that things were actually picking up and it's going the way it should? What were the signs? Um, The most telltale sign was when I would bring my idea in the space of others who I wanted to either be mentored by or thought could bring me some type of value. Uh, It was intimidating for some. And I am a person, I don't work from a place of fear. I work from a place of love. And when I don't receive that back, I step back and I usually <laughs> turn the other way. And, uh, you know, I came across, you know, a couple of women who um, was just downright nasty. Uh, yeah, and, and tried to stop my progress. And so I had to say, nope, that's not the right way, right? It might be the right thing that I need to do, but this is not the right person that I need to do it with. And so, um, I stepped out really on my own at some point, especially in the insurance business. Uh, Because when I got my license as an insurance agent, you know, a lot of times we have to be under um, others. And I believe that 
they sometimes can see themselves in you and um, they get a little intimidated by what you are bringing and who you are. But my mindset was already focused on what God had given me, this model for us in this industry. I didn't want to be a, uh, you know, a manager in insurance, right? I wanted to create a business for us in the industry, but they saw me as a threat. Um, so again, I had to move away from that and, um, kind of go on my own uh, in, in that way. And it wasn't really, and I have to be honest with you, I'm a reflection of you, Tamika. And it wasn't until I um, started uh, being more in, in your space and on your platform and connecting with other uh, stylists in the industry that your platform had given me access to. Mm -hmm. uh, where I can see that, okay, now I'm in my own lane. Um, and so with insurance, I just, I, I didn't go with the upline and, and all of those things. I created my own agency. So, wow. I, and yeah, so, and I think that's what they may have saw or seen, right? Oh, this girl is powerful. She She can do what I'm doing. Right. But instead of joining together with me, instead of connecting, they wanted to uh, bring me down. I mean, take me down and out. And I'm like, oh, no, you won't, because wow. God has something else planned for me. So, again, I just moved away from that and uh, niche down. Mm -hmm. That's another thing I niche down and I'm focused solely on my industry instead of just being out there selling insurance to. So let's talk about that for a moment. So there was a point in time where you were, were you solely selling insurance before you put it in the program? Or how, how did all of that work? Tell me yeah. about that part. Yeah, even though I had in my mind what I wanted to create and I no let me take that back I didn't have it all together because he was giving it to me in pieces mm -hmm. I knew that I wanted to uh, uh, offer insurance to beauty professionals um but also individuals because I'm licensed in multiple states so whoever needed insurance that's who I was going to service I mean let's be real I wasn't going to turn anybody down but the more um, I got into uh, sharing with the uh, beauty professional what their needs were um, and knowing what their needs were, the gap, you know, began to, you know, um, get smaller and smaller. And um, when I got educated on how to brand myself and begin to market in the proper way and understanding how important it is for people to know exactly what it is you offer mm -hmm. so that they can understand how you can help them. Right. Uh, then it became crystal clear to me. I, you know, I have to, you know, niche down and um, let my people know what it is I have for them. And so awesome. now, um, do you remember how long it took for you to basically, when you say niche down, you're talking about, directing your um, services to a particular audience yes. and helping people to completely clearly understand exactly what you offer for them. So how long did it take for you when you think back to, to basically create um, your audience and know who you're talking to? How long did that take? That took much longer because all, although I had the pieces to the puzzle when I knew what we needed, because I am a cosmetologist as well, I knew we didn't have these things, but it wasn't until I, um, again, met the beautiful, lovely, wonderful Miss Tamika James <laughs> and um, uh, others like uh, Tess Timms, who connected me to um, Dr. Avis, you know, DeWeaver with her program. And um, I have to tell you, you two together, it works for me. So, you know, Coach Tamika James, and, uh, you know, Coach DeWeaver, 
make up one for me. I, I, I love how you teach. Um, and uh, you helped me do that, believe it or not. Um, and, and yeah, I'm forever grateful because I study on my own time a lot of times because I'm working mm -hmm. on uh, at other times, uh, servicing others and getting them what they need. So yeah, I, I learned that from you and uh, coach uh, the Weaver. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, <laughs> thank you. you are so welcome. And thank you for stating that. I really appreciate yeah. that. So let's talk about that real quick, just briefly. So you're basically saying networking yes. and connecting with the right people will actually help um, an individual who's in business to actually, um, you know, think about what they need to do, focus um, to really take action, just the right people. So I, I think, you know, um, the statement will be that networking is really something that everyone has to do. Yeah, absolutely. Power of proximity. Mm -hmm. Power of proximity. So many of us don't understand what that means and how to network. Yeah. Some of us don't even know how to network because we are, let's just be honest, we are so focused on being the one who knows it all, or um, I didn't get this from this person, or I knew this, or she can't teach me anything that I don't already know. I've been in business just as long as she has, but that's where we go wrong. You know, we come from all different walks of life. We may be in the same industry, but we uh, have learned in different ways. And, uh, this brings me to my point. One of the reasons why I started this program as well is because when we um, bought into the idea of salon suites, right? When we bought into that idea, nothing wrong with it, except it took away our sense of community. Right. And it took away our sense of togetherness and the things that we do in the salon. It was nothing for us to walk over to Tamika James' chair to see how she did that curl just right, mm -hmm. right? Or, or watch from the other side of the room while she's doing a cut. You know, we taught each other. That's how we stay connected with the trends, but when we got bought into the idea of the salon suites, we begin to compete and we get we begin to be like crabs in a barrel, if you will, and mm -hmm. undercut each other as if it wasn't enough competition before. Um, yeah. But it you know it made it worse, and so um, I again begin to think of how we can come together again in a way that will help us be excited about the industry and just do the right thing by each other and have our business affairs in order, get our proper health insurance so that we can stop lying uh, <laughs> to the government about how <laughs> much we make, <laughs> right? About how much we make um, on our taxes. And some of us weren't even filing taxes right. at all. So then how do you own anything? How do you, yeah. right? How do you own it? This is this is some real talk here now. So your your product, mm -hmm. it definitely will um, assist with scheduling and um, what else? Let, let, let me not say it. What what's in the what's in the software? Because I want to I want to make a point here. But what's in the software? I'll let yes. you talk about your own product. Um, in the software, we have uh, scheduling. We have um, Darcy, which is your virtual assistant. Uh, she sends out your emails, which is all uh, built into the software. Uh, she sends out your email. She sends out your campaigns, your promotional ads. It's connected to your website. Uh, your clients can leave their card on file or not. Uh, we have uh, Fortune Teller, which predicts your future, 
you put in what you're currently making. And if you want to make more, you just tell the system how much more you want to make and how you would like to do that. And they show it shows you how you can do that and the amount of time you need to do that. Uh, it has over 300 reports that shows you um, the things that you need to itemize to take to your CPA. Uh, it has your booking system uh, so that every client has their client profile, everything in there from your colors to uh, notes to your COVID uh, visits, which is digital. It sends it out 24 to 48 hours before every appointment. And it will not let you book them in unless that COVID form is completed and filled out. So, you know, it's a lot of things in the system that you can uh, benefit from. And it's it's affordable. Wow, this is amazing. I mm -hmm. love um, all of the aspects to the software. And mm -hmm. I like Darcy. I like yeah. her. Yes. I like Darcy, <laughs> and I like Fortune Teller, too. Yes. So one of the things that I wanted to ask you about is that um, some professionals are not telling the truth on their taxes. So mm -hmm. have you come across anyone who did not really want to utilize the software because of that? Just a random question. I'm just wondering. Um, actually, no, um, because they can use the system and still not report because they may. Some of us have to make a mindset shift. Right. When you're used to making a certain amount of money and not documenting it, or if you're used to making a certain amount of money and you're um, still getting health care from the government. How do you break away from that without, yeah. you know, really having going like you say, having a deep dive conversation of how to slowly transition into being a legitimate business. Yes. Now, listen, you took me in a direction where I was going. I was directing you with that question. Mm -hmm. I don't <laughs> want to talk about the person who does not want to report the actual numbers. That's right. I want to really talk about the fact that by the time that they reach you, you have, I'm sure your avatar is a professional who yes. is looking to do business the right way on the up and mm -hmm. up. That's right. So that's, I'm sure that's who your avatar is. So mm -hmm. by the time they get to you, they're doing things the way they should. They want a system like what you have. They want to be able to see reports and mm -hmm. project different things. And they want to um, look at where they are. And actually they want to make more money every single day because mm -hmm. they are a particular type of business owner. So I really like um, the fortune teller part where, um, I imagine that, like you said, okay, I'm making $300 a day right now, but yeah. I'd like to make 400. So the system maybe looks at your activities to see where yeah. you could be utilizing your time best to mm -hmm. make your additional hundred dollars. If you want to make 400 instead yeah. of three. Yeah. Because okay. uh, you may want to do uh, two or three more cuts a week, or is it a weave a week? Mm -hmm. Is it a color? Is it a relaxer? It'll put that information, you can put that information there to play with the system a, a bit to see, uh, you know, how much time it takes you to make this additional revenue, mm -hmm. because that's what you want to pretty much gauge your time and effort and the money that comes from that time. Time is money. So how much time, how much less time, if that makes sense, can you uh, use to maximize the income uh, that you're going to generate by using yeah. fortune teller? I love it. It does sound like um, the software does bring about a better mindset yes. because when you're starting to talk about numbers, you do think about the time that it takes to achieve those numbers. Mm -hmm. And I, I really love that you just also said that it can be that you're spending less time making the money that you actually want to make because it's not the goal right. to actually work harder. It mm -hmm. is to work smarter. So it may be shifting your prices or doing something mm -hmm. that causes you to still make the money, but work less hours or however, it might be in a scheduling thing or whatever. Who knows? Yeah. But I'm excited about this. So you've got this software does all of these amazing things that you just spoke about. But then you also have the other aspect, which is the connection of insurance. Yes. Okay. So how excited are your customers 
to know that they have a software that's con helping to build a system mm -hmm. on this end, mm -hmm. and then there's other things that's being added. So let's talk about this insurance aspect in regards to the health insurance, because there's more than one type of insurance, right? It is. It is. Right. Health insurance, because my BMF Solutions is now uh, an uh, insurance agency, I have access to multiple insurance companies. So we have Aetna, Cigna, uh, National General. We have multiple health insurance agency, United Healthcare, that you have access to. Uh, even your supplemental um, insurance policies. And what I like about the health insurance is a lot of us think that we have to get your major health insurance like the Cigna and the Aetna. But if you are a healthy person, and a lot of us are not, we might have some minor issues or what have you. But for those of us who... Um, do not have any, and we are considered uh, healthy, I and, and especially young and healthy. Mm -hmm. If you're young and healthy, you're winning all the way around because at that point, now you get to save money and you can get what you call preventive health insurance. Mm -hmm. So, because if we're healthy and we're eating well, such as yourself and I, because I see you with your smoothies and your shakes, right? Mm -hmm. But if we are, you know, typically uh, taking out vitamins and herbs and eating healthy, then now we can get preventive health insurance, which is so much cheaper, but it covers all of our annual visits. And it also um, covers our screenings. Uh, it covers your um, uh, visits say if you have a, a, a cold or illness that you need to go in for your in, in, uh, injuries, it covers all of those things as well, maybe up to anywhere from four to six visits a year. Now, most people only go to the doctor annually, mm -hmm. annually for their mammogram, annually for their pap smear, annually for their, uh, you know, whatever it is, their health screenings. Right. And mm -hmm. then we go maybe to the urgent care for our colds or I have a headache that just won't go away and I want to get it checked out. Well, that's where you get your preventive care from. Okay. And you save money, whereas your major health care, which we provide as well, we we offer that. It offers all of the other things, but most of us don't utilize everything that's in it. So you're paying all of this extra money for health insurance that you don't use. So I take the health assessment, you know, when they reach out to me, they tell me what their needs are. I give them the um, health assessment and that's just simply them filling out um, a, a questionnaire and it lets me know what they are. And I tell them, tell the truth, because insurance companies already know, they just want to see if you're going to tell the truth because they have what you call the MIB, which is the Medical Information Bureau. And every time you have gone to the doctor, it's reported, just like your credit report. Oh, oh this is good stuff. This is top secret stuff. Yes. Oh, my goodness. Yes. Every MIB. MIB, Medical Information Bureau. So every time you go to the doctor, it's recorded. Okay. And the same thing with insurance. When you apply for insurance and you get a policy, and this is a good tip too, because a lot of people uh, pass away without letting their loved ones know where their policy is. And they don't know how to find this certain information. And so they go on GoFundMe. And sometimes people really do have a policy. You just didn't know. Well, wait, so right? what's the tip? How do we, how do so we know that they have a policy? Call your insurance commissioner. Commissioner? Oh. Your state's insurance commissioner. 
And oh, that is a tip of the year. Yes, because it's a lot of lost policies out there. It's people that, uh, you know, die every day and people don't know how to access their loved, one, their loved one's personal information. And of course, you have to be a next of kin or someone that will have information about that person. But if you're not, uh, and they'll let you know if it's there or not, but if you are not uh, the next of kin or the person that's supposed to have the information, it's only but so much they'll tell you. They'll let you know who that insurance company is. But when you call the insurance company, if you are not the beneficiary or the next of kin or have a policy number, you're not going to get that policy, you know. But most of us, a lot of us need to know where to get that information from. Um, the, and that is your state's insurance commissioner. Oh, that was good stuff. I'm mm -hmm. so glad that you shared that with us. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we have a software mm -hmm. for the business. And then we also have uh, the health insurance. Now comes, because you just started talking about people dying. So yes. let's talk about the life insurance. Oh my goodness. Let's talk about the life insurance portion of this. Okay, so what should people yes. know about the attachment of the life insurance? Now see, this is one of my favorite parts. This is one of my favorite parts because the life insurance is not only a life insurance. It has living benefits and your retirement, right? So when I um, teach or share with my clients the business model, I try to set them up no matter what their age is for longevity. I try to set them up so that they can have a plan if they choose to come from behind the chair or or if they're forced to become uh, to come from behind the chair i try to make it so that they will have a nest egg that they could retire to or at least um you know uh gain some dividends from you know in the course of their transition and the sooner you start with that life insurance policy the quicker um and the better off you'll be so How this long does it take to get a nest egg <laughs> uh i would say uh you know to start seeing some good tra traction about 10 years okay. so i would say at least keep that uh policy for at least 10 years now here's a, a, a I'm, I'm going to give you another good tip before I pivot back into the value of having an insurance policy with living um, benefits. Mm -hmm. And uh, that is, I, especially for some young people to middle age, maybe 40, uh, they have term, right? But a lot of people say, I don't want to get term because I don't want to have to die in order to, you know, leave my loved ones money, right? So with term, people typically get it for mortgage insurance to cover their mortgage because you can get a three hundred dollars or $400,000 policy for much cheaper. And then if you happen to die, they still get that money as a death benefit or they can go head on and pay off the mortgage so that the family wouldn't be burdened, right? But then you have term with return of premium, right? And that is all of the money that you put in a term policy at the end of that term, whether it be 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, and some people can even get 40 years, right? At the end of that term, you get 100% of all of your monthly premiums back. That in itself, is a nest egg. So yeah. then you can take that nest egg and you may be, depending on your age, you may be 40 something, 50 something, or even 60 or 70 something. But no matter what the age, you can take that nest egg and then now put it in an annuity. Because mm -hmm. with an annuity, you don't have to have a health check. Right. See, wow. uh huh. because with all of the other insurances, you have to have an exam. Right. And with all of the other insurances, of course, the older you get, the more it's going to cost. 
but with an annuity, you are looking toward the future. So if you have, say, sixty-five or $70,000 that has now been saved from that term, return of premium, and you take 10000 that you might want to put in a business or for whatever, a new car, and you take the other 50000 and you put in an annuity, some annuities pay you 10 to 30% just for putting your money in that annuity and the annuity covers your life. You could pay yourself at a certain age. If I put the start the annuity at 50, right? And at 60, I want to start an income stream for myself. I could do that. And if I die along the way, I my money is still growing, compounding, and I still have that death benefit. And for that company that wanted me to um, invest with them, and now they're going to give me 10 to 30% of what I put in. So if I put in $100,000, they're going to give me $110,000 or $130,000. So I'm already 10 to $30,000 up. Wow. And you can take 10% without being penalized annually of that money to live on, even if you don't turn on that income stream. So it's a, a really, really um, good way. So for those who believe they're too old or they don't have enough, it's easier than what you think. Your insurance policy is a meal that you spend one day on when you know when you go out to dinner with your friends and the bill is two and three four five hundred dollars that's your policy <laughs> for one month that you could you know uh prepare for your your future with wow i mean all of this insurance talk is making me wonder why uh, and know why people have sugar daddies and sugar mamas because these insurance policies can be you can get them to pay you yeah. At some point in time, and people have money at a certain age, like this is beautiful. It's I just had to make a quick joke about it, but I mean, like, what you're talking about right now is is real talk in regards to um, after so many years, it can actually give you money back. And um, I think oh, that's yeah. a beautiful thing. Yeah, yeah, a lot of people don't know that. Um, another uh, quick tip as well, if 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 I may, mm -hmm. okay, yeah, is um, most of our other counterparts, right? They tend to purchase insurance policies because it's tax-free, right? It's tax-free money and it's a way to build generational wealth and pass it on. An example of that is I have a granddaughter. With that information, with um, her being born 15 days old, from 15 days old to 15 years old, I pay $200 a month into her policy. It's called the million dollar baby. So at the age of 15, I you know longer- You said you pay $200 into her policy and what? It's called the million dollar baby. Okay. And I'm, I'm sharing with you how, how we are 20 and 30 years behind um, uh, generationally with the financial gap and why? Because they start when the children are babies and uh, they pay into their policy uh, $200 a month. You can do $150 a month. Um, and then the next five years, 200 a month. And then the next five years, another uh, add another $50 on there and it'd be $250 a month. Uh, for me, I just pay, even it all out, and pay $200 a month, okay, for 15 years. 15 years, it's a wrap. You don't have to pay anything else into that policy. But guess what? That money has been compounding. So when it's time for my granddaughter to go to college, mm -hmm. her college is paid for. When it's time for her to buy her first home, guess where I'm going? into that policy. When it's time for her to get her first vacation home, 
okay? It's in that policy. When it's time for her to get married, it's in that policy. That same policy, when she turns 65 years old, can give her $100,000 a year income stream for 20 years. So if she lives to age 95, guess what? She still would be leaving over a million dollars or two to her heirs or her beneficiary. She's a millionaire within that policy. You know why? Because whether you have a $100,000 policy or $200,000 policy, no matter what the face value is, because the face value is not the amount that's in the policy that's compounding, but the face value, guess what? Is an asset. So when you write on whatever you need to uh, uh, purchase a home, when they ask for your liabilities and your assets, mm -hmm. you can put your insurance policy. Oh, okay. They uh, Have you ever seen that? They ask for it, but most of us put zero because we do not have an insurance policy. Oh. But if you put that face value amount as your asset under insurance, that gets counted. Now you have access of $100,000 that you're worth. Your that net worth goes up, yeah. Your net, worth com your net worth completely goes up. So just to give you an example of how now my granddaughter will be able to pass the torch for her child and say, this is how it's done because she'll, she'll be living it. Mm -hmm. We didn't have that because our parents didn't know. But she will be able to experience the benefit and the value of having this life insurance policy and living off of it, not having anything to do with with whatever she has to do in life. What's your plan for making sure your grandbaby, your brand new grandbaby, yes, finds out about this policy and actually understands it? At what point in time will you begin to educate your grandbaby on this? I would say probably about 10 okay. when, when she's about 10 years old, when she can really understand how money works and she want to get her lemonade stand and uh, get the taste of, you know, being an entrepreneur. Um, because I think even if you have a nine to five, all of us should have some type of entrepreneur spirit in us and have a side job or, you know, something like that, that will bring us some type of, uh, you know, extra income. It's a little bit of entrepreneurship in all of us. Oh yeah. You know, this is entrepreneur speak. And I'm glad that you shared that because there are quite a few people who don't have a clue. Um, yeah. you know, some folks are nine to fivers and just don't even see it. Can't even begin to like think about what it would be like. They can't mm -hmm. even understand how to do it. So listen, that's why we're sharing these stories. Yes. They need to know the ups and the downs. They do. All right. <laughs> So let's talk about how um, you've been in this business since 2016. Yes. And with my BMF solutions. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, so you walked away from the chair, mm -hmm. you started this business, things started taking off. It's now 2021. What's going on now? Well, I came from behind the chair in 2014, but I didn't uh, really start to get my, uh, licenses and name it and all of those things until 2016. And I started to see some traction in 2017 because, you know, everyone that I talked to, they was like, oh, that's a good idea. Oh, there, you know, there is a need for that, but I don't know how she's going to pull that off, you know, type of thing. But, you know, they was rooting for me. Um, uh, and I'm sorry, I forgot your question. <laughs> oh, yeah, I want you to bring us up to speed. But what I really want to know right now, before you do that, is what does my BMF stand for? My BMF Solutions. What? How did you name this? Great company? question. Uh, my BMF stands for my business, my medical, and my financial security. Just yes. you know what it is. Awesome. I wanted to keep it simple so that they can really understand what it is they were uh, getting into. Yeah. Awesome. I love it. I love mm -hmm. it. I hope that you're telling people that all the time because that is like yeah. amazing. Yeah. All right. 
So I wanted you to just bring us up to speed where you are with the company right now, because you've gone through, you've gone through this journey of, you know, getting to where you are today. So what's happening in the company? Are you guys like out here um, connecting with uh, salons and companies? Well, what, what, what are you yes. doing? Where are you are? Where oh are you? God, it's so amazing. I am, my business is growing. I am scaling as we speak. Right now we have 15 agents in multiple states. Ooh. I am, yes, I know. I'm so excited about that. Um, I am licensed in multiple states and so are my agents. Um, we have uh, agents in Maryland, D.C., Virginia, West Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, Mississippi, Atlanta, uh, California, uh, and uh, it's a couple, Alabama. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, and, and a couple more I can't think of, like Arkansas. And so uh, we have agents in multiple states. I have... Uh, accountability partners as well, because I branched off into coaching, um, which I learned. Talk about yeah. it. I, I just found out about that. Yes. <laughs> so um, basically you are, let me see what you told me about this coaching thing. You provide bronze and plat platinum coaching for millionaire mindset beauty professionals stuck in their mess. Yes. So what, what does that look like? What are you guys doing? One um, example I'll share with you. I have, and uh, she's a fairly new client who was really stuck in her mess. She knew everything. And it wasn't until I kept reiterating to her my moniker, if you will, I help beauty professionals, you know, millionaire mindset beauty professionals, because I know how grand we are. Yeah, I know how we can put on our face because we're used to making up others faces and our own as well. We're not so much as fake, but we're used to covering up our mess. And um, this particular um, client, she has, uh, oh my God, her talent is amazing but she didn't know how to package it. And although she had a, a millionaire mindset, she ultimately it was poverty stricken because she was stricken with fear of losing. Um, how am I gonna pay for this? How am I gonna pay for that? Well, you're sitting on a millionaire talent, mm -hmm. right? With yeah. a poverty stricken, stricken mindset so but when i say millionaire mindset because the grandiose of it all makes them believe that they're grander than grand and they are going to do it a certain kind of way but they find themselves keep going in a circle chasing right. their tail because they don't know how to package it and they don't have access to what they need to offer what they have in the proper way. Mm -hmm. And so I get them unstuck in that way by helping them package their model, really, just as um, I have. Um, and quick example, I have um, a, a client who, she's a wig maker. She's a celebrity wig maker. Uh, and she does theater and all of that. But guess what, Tamika? When she would go to do those jobs, she didn't have contracts and she would find herself doing the work. And what would happen? Sometimes not get paid. Exactly. Also not get paid their worth. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah there's all sorts of things that happen in that. Oh my space. gosh. You know, they show up and then there's no work and then they just have to go back home. And then yeah, all, all, all sorts of, sorts of stuff. Yeah. Or they tell her, um, this is just a mock trial. Let me see what you can do. And they, then they have a whole photo shoot set up. Right. Just yeah. pure game. And I'm like, you can't be in business at your level with the uh, a magnitude of what you do. If you don't have contracts, they don't respect you or your business. As soon as you walk through the door, they can tell you everything, anything, right. any and everything, <laughs> any and everything. And yeah. so that's just an example of how, you know, I 
help them to understand the importance of what they have to offer and how to get respect for what they do. Um, and now she's charging uh, what she's supposed to because she's teaching eight hour classes and they are a thousand dollars, right? But she has a payment plan for them if they want it, they can pay in full. And she has something to offer them if they do pay in full. So she's pretty much structured now. Um, and she's teaching them how to make wigs, like the lace fronts and the lace wigs and all of those things that you uh, see. Yes, it's tedious and it's long, but for the person who wants to do that, they can charge two, three, four thousand dollars $4,000 for a wig that they make and uh, present it to theater and celebrity, mm -hmm. you know, publications, it's limitless. But she didn't know how to, uh, you know, handle her business, right? I handle my BMS is the uh, <laughs> motto. Um, in addition to that, she now is uh, signed up for her health insurance, her life insurance. But again, um, if we don't know, we, we don't know. I show them how easy it is to know. So the, it, what's the name of the program? The Bronze, my coaching program is um, the Bronze Scholar, or okay. it's, uh, you can do the Platinum Scholar. The Bronze Scholar is six months and the Platinum Scholar is a 12 month uh, program. Okay. You said six mm -hmm. months and eight months? No, six months and uh, 12 months. And 12. Okay. Yes. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Awesome. Awesome. All right. So is there anything that you want people, someone in business to know that they should not do? I always like to have my guests to tell a quick, like a little short, quick mm -hmm. bedtime story. What is something you never want someone in business to ever do? I never want them to feel like they have to lie about who they are mm -hmm. in business because in business trust is key. It's, it's your personality of your brand. So don't lie about who you are. Just get better at becoming who you are. Yes. And oh. you know, the truth the I had a friend that used to say the truth is in the pudding of the pudding, right? So that means you have to get to know uh, the core of who you are so that you can be comfortable with uh, sharing that with your avatar and, and be okay with it. No one is perfect, uh, but you have to understand who you are first and who you are in business in order for you to be open enough um, and transparent enough for people to want to do business with you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for that. Yes. So is there anything else that you would like for anyone to know about you or your business? This is Entrepreneur Speak. Yes. So it could be that you want us to know something about what you have going on. Um, it could be a tip. It could be anything that you really want to share before we close out this interview. Yes. Once again, thank you so much for having me, Tamika. This is really awesome. I'm honored to be on your platform once again. And um, as I mentioned to you before, I've made leaps and bounds uh, with just getting to know you more and applying your coaching tools, you know, so thank you for that. But I would say to others to be unstoppable um, is something that my mother instilled in me. And I just want to, you know, share with everyone else, be unstoppable, have unwavering faith in what you do and keep going. Uh, you know, don't believe the naysayers, just do the work. It's not going to be easy, but you have to do the work. And the more you do the work, the more you will see results. And yes. yeah, that's it. With, with that said, I want to tell you um, that I am so proud of you. You just spoke about keep doing the work. And um, from the moment that I met you, that's what you've been doing. You were doing the work. You, you. you never sat still when um, ever there was any type of suggestion or whenever you took a look at your business and you determined that there was something else that was needed, 
Mm -hmm. you jumped on it and you made sure you got the information that you needed. So Mm -hmm. anyone that comes under your direction, I can only imagine just how well they're going to do just based upon who you are and how you operate. Because your own level of education that you've gotten for yourself, your own level of your direction for your own company. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Just the way that you move. I know that anyone that's under you, they have to be picking up at least a little bit of that. So you just keep doing what you're doing. I'm very super duper proud of you. Thank you. (laughs) I've, I've seen it growing from the very beginning. And this is a beautiful thing to just see it right here, right now. Yes. So, um, I'm honored to interview you today. Yes, ma'am. And um, I can't wait to see you on somebody else's talk show, not even only on my uh, <laughs> podcast here. You're gonna yeah. be here. I'm not really sure, but someone yeah. big is going to be interviewing you soon. And mm-hmm. this company is going to get even more um, traction than it has gotten so far because of the uniqueness of it. And I'm, I'm really yes. excited for you. Yeah. Thank so, you. Keep going. Thank, thank you, you so thank much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm not trying to induce any tears here today. Yes, I know, right? <laughs> yeah. But what I want you to what thank I want you. you to do right now, because it's really important to me to share your company. That's what this is all about. Mm-hmm. I want exposure for you, for your greatness, for someone else who needs you, who um, also knows someone else that needs you, to be able to pass your information along. So please tell us. Mm-hmm. the website that they will go to to get information um if there's a place they need to know about that coaching whether that's yes. a phone call or an email whatever yes. it is you need to know i want you to tell the audience right now how to get in touch with you even your social media yes ma'am well i can be reached at my bmf solutions that network if you are interested in my coaching program it's a rogers at mybmfsolutions.com and my social media handle is mybmfsolutions on Facebook or I, my personal page is Arnetta Rogers on Facebook. Now with my IG, I am still building, so bear with me with that, but I can also be reached at mybmfsolutions on IG as well. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, we are going to close out another episode of Entrepreneurs Speak with Tamika James. And um, I wanted to say another big thank you to Miss Arnetta Rogers of My BMF Solutions for bringing some awesomeness to our platform. You guys can be listening or you can watch. So you're either watching on YouTube or you're listening on Red Circle. Either way, we will catch you guys on the next episode of Entrepreneur Speak. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Underground Biz Group. Underground Biz Group.